Right, I mentioned uh, Sir John Curtis, Professor Sir John Curtis, who's Professor of Politics at the University of Strathclyde, uh, absolute election and polling guru, and he joins me now. Um, for the future of the Conservative Party, if we look at the supposed three front runners, Penny Mordaunt, Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson, who would you divine to be the future? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Well, in a sense, we're looking at a situation not dissimilar to the one, the choice that faced the party when it uh, had to, the choice between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. If the Conservative Party wishes to um, put as its leader somebody who is likely to appeal to voters who are outside of the party, uh, then they would opt for Rishi Sunak. If they want to uh, go for somebody who is popular amongst those who are supporters of the Conservative Party, uh, then they might well go for Boris Johnson. I mean, that was very much position. You know, Liz Truss was the choice of Conservative voters and members last time, Rishi Sunak of those outside of those two camps. Um, the polling is already looking very, very similar in that regard to the uh, polling for the previous leadership election. So, John, how surprised or otherwise were you by just 44 days in power for the Prime Minister? Well, to be honest, um, not entirely surprised. Some of us were saying towards the end of the last leadership contest that um, the, the Conservative Party was finding itself with a challenge between, on the one hand, its wish to have a smaller state which, uh, and, and less, tax, less taxation, um, i.e. to try to reverse the trends that, that it inherited as a result of COVID. That was what Liz Truss was standing for. But or equally also uh, as a party of fiscal responsibility. And there was always a question mark as to whether the markets would be willing to tolerate what by the end of Liz Truss's leadership campaign wasn't simply a campaign which said that uh, we should reduce taxes, but also said we should increase spending in order to deal with the energy crisis. Um, uh, you know, I think that question mark was there. There were also question marks, I mean, articulated particularly strongly by Matthew Paris in The Times, as to whether Liz Truss actually had the skill set that was required to be prime minister, in particular, uh, somebody who was able to communicate effectively with the public um, and somebody who could get a degree of empathy with the public. Now, the truth is, on both those, both those doubts were there. They just simply were reinforced and, in a sense, proven perhaps rather more quickly than any of us might have anticipated. The polls will be causing consternation among senior Conservatives, I imagine. What is the reality? Were there to be a general election in the next month or two? What do you imagine would happen, Sir John? Oh, the truth is that it would be a disaster for the Conservative Party. We are now looking at the moment, the Labour Party 32 points ahead in the opinion polls. Um, and that is basically at least as bad, if not now, even slightly worse than it ever got under John Major's uh, leadership. And we know how that ended up in 1997 with the worst defeat since 1906. Now, I think um, those around Boris Johnson will probably say, well, you know, at 22 percent, the position the Conservatives find themselves in is not that dissimilar from the one that they were in when Theresa May was uh, forced out of office in the spring of 2019. The crucial difference, however, is that then voters were defecting from the Conservatives to the Brexit Party, and those were the people that Boris Johnson was able to get back on side and therefore they eventually win at the end of that year. Now, however, we are facing uh, a situation where it is the Labour Party that is taking votes off the Conservatives, and that even if you ask people to choose between Sir Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson as to who they think would be the best Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer at the moment is well ahead. So it's not entirely clear that Boris, who is undoubtedly a giant amongst, in terms of political communication as compared with the pygmies of all of the other people who might possibly stand against him. I mean, nobody can doubt that. But the problem is that in these circumstances, it's less clear that he is necessarily going to be the answer uh, to the Conservative Party's difficulties, particularly given he is facing an investigation by the Privileges Committee over uh, his defence of his uh, uh, party gate in the House of Commons. And, you know, there is at least a possibility that if indeed the committee rules against him, he, be, he might face a recall petition in his own constituency. Lastly, writing in today's Daily Telegraph, Fraser Nelson says, if, if the Conservatives get the right candidate, and he lays out the pros and cons for the three prime candidates, if they pick the right con candidate, a recovery of sorts could be possible prior to the general election. Do you reckon he's right? Uh, of sorts, 
Yes. Um, I and don't what would that mean? What 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 is well, the well, best in, they in, might in, hope in, for? In, well, the, the Conservative Party wouldn't lose as badly as it is as at the moment. It, it evidently would do so. But you know, the precedent of you know the, what we have seen in the last month is almost a complete repeat of what happened in the wake of Black Wednesday in September 1992, which is the last time a Conservative administration. Um, got into trouble with the financial markets. There was a big swing against the uh, against the Conservatives in the polls to Labour. We've seen an even bigger one this time around, an order of 10, 10, 11 percentage points. The Conservatives' reputation for economic competence was shredded and you know we ended up with a deeply unpopular Prime Minister. Now, of course, what is true, the one thing that's different from 1992, John Major survived, Liz Truss didn't. But whether or not that a change of leader is going to be sufficient to make the Conservatives actually electorally credible is certainly highly debatable. The history of British uh, sophology is that if a government gets into a fiscal crisis, it usually loses at the next general election. Voters don't forget these things. And the problem for the Conservatives is that the brand of them as a party that can run the economy to provide the country with effective government has now been very, very badly tarnished. And it may be very difficult to recover within the space of two years. Always enjoy speaking with you. Thanks for your time, John.